In this video, the graphical user interface for parsing the historical files is described. Here, only the graphical user interface is described. For explanations about the various features, see the relevant sections in the manual. The window is divided into the following main panes. Parsing controls. The file is parsed according to the values stored in these graphical components. Info wizard. This pane is shared between simple information about the file and the wizard. Original file. Here the original file is shown as is. Parsed file. The file as parsed or interpreted is shown here. Inconsistencies. Inconsistencies in the file are reported here. The last three panes in the previous list have dividers between them. You can resize them vertically by dragging the dividers. The parsing controls graphical components comprise everything needed by Threading Conceiver to parse a file. Information stored in them is used to parse the file. They are set up by Threading Conceiver upon launching the auto-detect routine, or by the user in all the other cases. If you activated or launched the auto-detect, these controls are set up by Threading Conceiver. This way you can see the values Threading Conceiver opted for. In case you find some anomalies, you can use the auto-detect setup as a starting point and make the fine-tuning by hand, tweaking the controls. Just to be clearer, it doesn't exist an auto-detect mode. There is just an auto-detect routine that you can launch. When the routine is over, the parsing controls are at your disposal and you can change them at your will. The parsing controls are exactly the same for the wizard and the manual parsing. The only difference is that the wizard lets you act only on a small subset of them at a time, providing a description of what they are for. In both cases, they are set by the user. The data info wizard pane, when the wizard is activated, is used by the wizard, otherwise it shows simple information about the loaded and interpreted file. The simple data information about the interpreted file can be useful for a fast check as to whether the file has been interpreted correctly. The approximate values of the right information should be apparent to the user. If they don't match those shown here, it means there is a parsing issue. You don't need to know the exact values in order to compare them with the ones reported here. The order of magnitude is enough. The time period is the date time of the first and the last date time. It is the time frame of the file. Check if these date times add up with what you are expecting. If you downloaded a file from year 2000 to 2022, those years must match with what is reported here. In particular, the first and the last date time must be in the right order, meaning the first date time must be before the second. If they're not, it means the checkbox reverse line order has the wrong value and you should toggle it. The entry items is the number of data entries in the file. It's almost equal to the number of lines in the file, excluding the first and the last ones, usually containing headers and other descriptions. Again, the order of magnitude of the number reported here must match the one you are expecting. For instance, if the file is a classical end of day, that is one entry per day, there should be about 252 entries per year, or 2520 in 10 years. Look at the order of magnitude, not at the exact numbers. In the previous examples, it's enough to check if there are hundreds or thousands of entries. The absolute maximum and minimum are the maximum and minimum code values of all the files. As usual, this must match with the order of magnitude of what you are expecting. For instance, stock prices in US dollars usually are in the range from a few dollars to a few hundreds. Indices might span up to the tens of thousands, like the Dow or the Nasdaq, while the Standard & Poor 500, FTSE 100, CAC 40 are all around the thousands. Cryptocurrencies are highly variable, with some as low as hundreds of dollars. The original file pane shows the loaded file as is, without any alteration. 
You must look at this and understand its format in order to instruct 3D Conceiver to interpret it correctly. Particularly useful are the column headers present in virtually all files. They report the order of the columns, like date, open, high, low, close, volume, adjusted close. Sometimes they come in the language of the stock market exchange. Tabs are not visible per se and are represented with a variable number of spaces. If there are tabs, the show tabs checkbox will make them clearly visible. Each tab will be substituted with a string less than sign tab greater than sign. The show radio buttons allow you to view the entire file or just the first and the last lines. In the parsed file pane, the parsed file is shown and you can look at how it has been interpreted. The show radio buttons allow you to view the entire file or just the first and the last lines. Check whether the file has been interpreted the right way. The most important things you must check are the following. The columns or fields must have been properly identified. For instance, what is reported as the open column must really contain the open column of the original file. Numbers must be parsed appropriately too. The parse file pane shows the numbers formatted according to the user preference, tools, options, numbers. Therefore, the number in the original file and in the parse file table might appear differently. They are the similar format. Make sure they are the same number. In particular, the decimal and thousand separators must be recognized accurately. So if a number is 10,000 in the original file, it must not appear as 10 in the parse file just because the thousand separator has been misinterpreted. The parse file is presented sorted from oldest on top to most recent and bottom data. Look at the date time and make sure it is really that way. Otherwise, you must toggle the checkbox reverse line order. Only the lines of the original file with data, numbers, must be retained, while the others must be skipped. So make certain that no extra lines are embodied in the parse file at the beginning and at the end. For instance, the headers must not be incorporated. For this, it's convenient to select the radio button, show first and last lines. The inconsistencies pane shows inconsistencies, errors and warnings that 3D Conceiver found in the original file. There can be real issues of the original file, like volume data missing, or they can stem from an erroneous parsing which requires fine-tuning a little bit more with the user interface in order to make 3D Conceiver understand the data. Always look at the inconsistencies listed here before accepting the format by pressing the OK button. Some types of real inconsistencies due to issues in the original file can be dealt with by 3D Conceiver. To see and change the rules used to manage that is correct the inconsistencies, press the button Edit. Rules can be applied by pressing the button Apply and unapplied by pressing the button Unapply. If the Show All radio button is checked, all the inconsistencies are listed. Be careful to select this option. If the parsing is strongly erroneous, a huge amount of data will be written, so many that the program might even seem to have crashed. We suggest that you select the other radio button first described below and, if really necessary, switch to this option only when the parsing is reasonably accurate. If the show only few per type radio button is checked, only a few inconsistencies per type are listed just the first ones encountered and all the following are suppressed. This is useful to focus on the generic problem, not on all the lines suffering it. For instance, if the volume data is missing, it is useless to list all the lines missing the volume data. Just a few suffice, so that you know. More importantly, the total number of errors is reported anyway, both in absolute and in percentage form. The button auto detect launches the auto-detect feature that automatically recognizes the format. The button wizard launches the wizard that guides you through the necessary steps to correctly parse the file, focusing on each aspect one at a time. 
The Save and Load buttons are for saving and loading the historical file format, not the historical file itself. If the Auto Detect feature interpreted the file correctly, you don't need to save or load the format, because it means the Auto Detect routine can deal with data like this. In the unlikely event that the Auto Detect feature fails, however, setting the parsing control is not a pleasant activity. So, once you succeeded in making 3D Conceiver interpret the file format appropriately, you should save the format configuration by pressing the button Save. This should be necessary only once per data provider, because each provider will always format the files in the same way. The next time you want to load the file downloaded by the same provider, just load the format by pressing the button Load. The file extension is the part of the name of the file coming after the last dot. When saving the file, an extension to the file is added automatically. By default, the file extension is .historical, but you can customize it in Tools, Options, Extensions. Both when saving and loading a file in the pop-up window, only files with such an extension are shown. To see all the files, regardless of the extension in the pop-up window, select File of Type – All Files. The button trial is for testing your historical data files without buying a license. By pressing this button, a simulation will be run with your historical data, but the algorithms used to compose the training system and the indicators shown will be automatically selected. You cannot select or change them. This way, you can test whether 3D Conceiver works properly with your historical data files before purchasing a license. We prefer referring to this as a trial feature and not as a trial mode, because all it does is launch a simulation and nothing else. The trial button is always enabled except in the following cases. Parsing errors. If serious parsing errors are present, that don't let 3D Conceiver work correctly, the button is not enabled. You must correct the errors in order to enable the button. Errors are not synonym of inconsistencies. Some inconsistencies can be present and the trial button be enabled. License valid. If you have a valid license installed, this button is disabled for your convenience because the trial feature is pointless in this case. The button OK is the final step of loading and parsing an historical file. By pressing it, you actually start using the file. After pressing it, the window disappears and from the moment all calculations of 3D Conceiver will be based on this historical file, substituting the previous one. The OK button is enabled only if all the following conditions are met. No parsing errors. If serious parsing errors are present, then don't let 3D Conceiver work correctly, the button is not enabled. You must correct the errors in order to enable the button. Errors are not synonym of inconsistencies. Some inconsistencies can be present and the OK button be enabled. Valid license. This is actually the only difference between the free version and the paid version of 3D Conceiver. The free version is fully functional, but you can use only the preloaded data. The OK button is never enabled. If you want to use other historical data, you must buy and install a license. This will enable the OK button. The button Cancel cancels the action and closes the window, as usual. 